Some results have some pretty crazy increases and some seem to play pretty much the same. Today we're going to take a look at the One X GPU 1 versus the One X GPU 2, what's different in the features as well as the performance. Briefly going over the specs, the One X GPU 1 has the AMD 7600 MXT with 8GB of VRAM, and the One X GPU 2 has the AMD 7800 MXT with 12GB of VRAM. Both devices have the same I.O. except the One X GPU 2 has a micro SD card reader added. Feel free to pause the video if you want to get a closer look at the specs. Moving up to the 7800 MXT comes with some size costs, so if you look at the One X GPU 2 on the left here, you can see it's quite a bit taller than the One X GPU, as well as a little bit wider. And looking from the top, you can see that the One X GPU 2 is also quite a bit wider, so it's taller, thicker, and wider. I didn't capture the video footage of the weight, but the One X GPU 2 is about double the weight of the original. So the One X GPU 2 is significantly larger than the original. Let's take a look to see if that extra size leads to extra performance. For the benchmarks, I use settings that I would actually play at. They're not necessarily uh, with FSR turned off or with frame gen off. These do have frame gen on and sometimes FSR on. I've gotten feedback that people would prefer those off, maybe in a future video, but this video footage was captured quite some time ago. Make sure to take a look at all the games, I also did an average of all the results at the end so you can get a full summary. Starting with Forza Horizon 5 on USB 4, we have a 31% increase on the average and a 19% increase on the 1% low. The gap increases when we move over to Oculink with a 67% increase in the average FPS and 93% for the 1% low. And here's all the results together for your reference. Moving on to Forza Motorsport, we have a 23% increase in the average FPS with USB 4 and a 21% increase in the 1% low. With Oculink, the gap widens once again with a 34% increase for the average FPS and 67 for the 1% lows. And here is all the results together again for your reference. Now for Starfield with USB 4, there's a 22% increase in the average and 58% for the 1% low. And then for Oculink, we have a 34% increase for the average and 31 for the 1% lows. Now looking at the combined results, USB 4 on the One X GPU 2 is very similar to Oculink on the original One X GPU. On to Cyberpunk with USB 4, we have a 42% increase in the average and 57% for the 1% low. And on to Oculink, we have a 43% increase in the FPS for the average, and we actually have a decrease for the 1% low, so less stability here. Looking at the combined results, we can see that even USB 4 on the One X GPU 2 is quite a bit ahead here. Interestingly, for God of War with USB 4, we're not really seeing any gains here, it's pretty much consistent. However, with Oculink, we get a 40% increase in the average and a 50% increase for the 1% low. With the combined results, you can see the best way to play is the One X GPU 2 with Oculink. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider on USB 4, we don't really have much of an increase. We have a 14% increase for the average and the 1% low seems to be pretty much the same. And for Oculink, we have a 21% increase and 28% for the 1% low. And with the combined results, we can see that Oculink is probably your best bet if you want to get the best performance. Helldivers 2 with USB 4 has a 49% increase for the average and 36 for the 1% low. For Oculink, we get some pretty big changes, 63% for the average and 94 for the 1% low. And looking at the combined, we can see that USB 4 on One X GPU 2 is outperforming the One X GPU 1 with Oculink. Horizon Forbidden West with USB 4 has a 39% increase in the average and 27 for the 1% low. Something weird with Oculink on the One X GPU 1, we have about 150% increase for the One X GPU 2. This does seem to be a bit of an outlier though. One X GPU 2 definitely gets the win for this game. Now for all the games combined and averaged, if we take a look at the USB 4, you can expect a 27% increase in the average FPS and 26 for the 1% low. For Oculink, you can expect about a 50% increase for performance between the One X GPU 1 and the One X GPU 2. And here's the final results. Once again, this is an average of all 8 games combined. It's a bit of a unique result I haven't done before, so let me know in the comments if this is something you like. I think it's a good way to kind of summarize things. We have a 50% increase if you're using Oculink and about somewhere in the 20 to 25% improvement if you're using USB 4, which would be for the Legion Go or the ROG Ally X. After looking at the results, it's quite a bit of a gap between Oculink and USB 4. If you're going to use USB 4 with your Legion Go or Ally X or whatever device, 
you're going to see about a 27% increase if you're going over USB 4. If you go to Oculink though, that's really where the big game changer is, where you're going to see about a 50% increase. One other thing that people often ask about that I didn't get a chance to record unfortunately is the fan noise. So without really having a demo to show you, you'll just have to take my word for it. The One X GPU 2 being larger and I guess the 7800 just being more power hungry definitely produces a louder fan noise than the original One X GPU. Both eGPUs are pretty solid options for your handheld. If you want more power, definitely go with the One X GPU 2. If you're looking more for portability or fan noise, then then the One X GPU one is probably the better pick. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.